What's up, everybody? Today we're going to explain the markings and numbers on this vintage lens. Okay, so today we're going to look at some of the common markings, numbers, and symbols on these vintage lenses that are there to aid us in our photography. Okay, so let's turn this lens around. We'll start with the front of the lens. And the first thing we see here is the diameter of the lens. This symbol represents a diameter, and then it's followed by a number, and then the millimeters as well. So you know exactly how big it is across the front of your lens. This is important for knowing for filters, for caps, for I have a few screw-on uh, lens hoods. You need to know that filter size. Well, that's where you're going to get it. Okay, moving around the front of the lens here, we also have the focal length listed there, and that's represented in millimeters as well. This is a 28 millimeter prime, and then next to that is the maximum aperture for the lens. Okay, moving down the barrel of the lens, we run into our focusing ring, and this one's represented in meters and feet. And as we turn down from our maximum to our minimum focus here, we reach 0.4 meters on this lens. That is our minimum focus. That's as close as we can get to a subject and still be in focus. And on the other side of the focusing ring, you have this infinity symbol, which represents your furthest focusing distance. Next, I want to jump to the aperture ring, and this controls how much light is allowed into your camera, and this is usually represented in numbers. I have seen some aperture rings that are totally smooth. They don't have any numbers listed on them at all, but just remember, your minimum aperture is going to be your larger number. Your max is going to be your smaller number. Okay, finally, in between your focusing ring and your aperture ring is your hyperfocal distance scale. And while this looks really complicated, it isn't that complicated. And once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to shoot images without the LCD or viewfinder and still get them in focus. Okay, let me give you a quick example of how this scale works. First, you choose an aperture. We chose f2.5. Then you find the corresponding aperture in the hyperfocal distance scale, and those have lines above them. Carry those lines up into the focusing ring, and you get your rough idea of what your focus is going to be. You can see in this case, it's about 7 feet to about 10 feet. Finally, we have this mounting dot, and this would have been used to align this lens with its original film camera, but we're going to use it to align it with the adapter to adapt it to our new mirrorless camera. Now, not every lens is going to look the same as mine, and these numbers and markings and symbols can be confusing, but they really are there to aid us. Now, I always like to leave you with a little betta fish bokeh, and if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more like it, go ahead and subscribe, and I always like hearing the comments, so leave a comment down below, and we'll see you next time.